apologize for that. Man. It's all right. Uh, when you're ready. Uh, I'm here as a third party intervener in that matter, appearing as authorized representative for my client. I'll set for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments and make a, a reservation of all of my constitutional rights, mostly the first, the sixth, and the 14th amendments. Thank you. The record to reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in custody in person. He is wearing his jail attire this morning. Um, I do want to make a record that at 8.46 p.m. yesterday, I did swear in two additional sheriff's deputies who would be working with our jurors through the overnight or third shift hours. Um, I did uh, administer the same oath that was administered to all the other bailiffs. Um, yesterday evening. Then of course we are uh, open and the jurors are here and they will be instructed to uh, start their deliberations. The only other thing I would put on the record is I have received information regarding the Reddit post uh, that there was a subsequent post from that website uh, indicating that it was a prank. Um, and so I know, I don't know to what extent the Sheriff's Department uh, is looking into that as well, but it's my understanding um, based on news reports that uh, that entire post or site was taken down. Not the site of Reddit, but it's no longer, I believe, viewable. But there was that additional information uh, regarding that, at least from the administrator, I believe, of that post. So I just wanted to put that on the record. And uh, if and when, or I should say when, uh, the investigation is completed, uh, I will assure the parties that you will be provided with that information. So Until, go ahead. So it's being called a prank? Per the Reddit post itself, yes. So we, so we don't have any idea if that's a, a fact though, right? You're correct. <clears throat> I'm just putting on the record the additional information that's been reported on. Um, and then again, once the Sheriff's Department concludes their investigation, uh, it will be turned over to the parties. So at this point, um, until there's a question or a verdict, um, courtroom will remain open. I'm going to be working in my office on other things uh, and will be available, of course, if there are any questions or if a verdict is reached. Right, so go. notify the parties. Judge. Yes. I'm so oh, go ahead. No. Go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm still very concerned about this whole uh, Reddit thing after having the chance to fully read it and um, look at some of the language that's in it. Um, it it's, it's very concerning. That's uh, why there's an investigation, sir. It's anytime there's an allegation that the integrity of this judicial process has been compromised, especially with a juror, I take that incredibly seriously, which is why I turned it over to the Sheriff's Department. I would uh, like your honor to, if it pleases the, uh, the court and if it pleases your honor, I would like to look at some alternatives. If if I may bring up the, uh, in, in, in regards to the language, I, I also want to state that uh, for the record, uh, this did not come about from the prosecution side, from the defense side, and certainly not from your honor side. Um, this is something that just pretty much sprang up. Um, a lot of my concern, though, just not from just the language and the actual post, but um, I was kind of concerned that uh, I was the last one to learn of this information that had been known. Uh, I wasn't aware of it until after 6.30 last night, um, or around that time, because I, I don't want to misquote the record, but somewhere around that time. It was shortly after 7. 
Oh, so it was after. I, I didn't know. I I thought it was. I knew it was after six thirty, but I didn't want to incorrect incorrectly state um, the record. Your I can Honor, address that for you right now if you would like. Yeah. I, 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 um, if it pleases you, it pleases your honor. I would like to uh, request some alternatives to 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 this uh, issue. Um, What's your specific request? My specific specific request would be to. Uh, look into a mistrial and also any alternatives uh, along those lines short of that or along those lines or a mistrial um, I was looking at some obviously yesterday was very very long for, for, for everybody um, and as you know because of my status uh, here in the the jail I'm allowed to have uh, law library time up until a certain point of the evening and then I have to shut it down <clears throat> per jail policy. Uh, so I was I was able to find a few different things that I wanted to bring to uh, your honor's attention if I may. Go ahead. Um, one being uh, uh, United States versus Perez, uh, 22 U.S. 579. And that specifically, I think it's referenced because that one is pretty old in itself, but it's referenced in a lot of the other uh, case laws that I actually found. I think, and I could be, if I'm interpreting this incorrectly, I apologize. Um, they kind of use that as kind of like the benchmark uh, for what they refer to as uh, manifest necessity. That's kind of like one of the leading cases that each one references uh, in regards to issues similar to two things like this when it when it comes into play. Um, and it specifically uh, points to uh, trial judge's discretion and um, I think that's kind of like the leading one. Also, I looked at uh, Brown versus Rushton, Rush Rushton, uh, five seven two F dot three D uh, one ninety eight, which speaks to uh, the language. Is basically it speaks to the same thing. It speaks about uh, manifest necessity. Uh, it it uh, speaks about. Um, uh, if there's an issue of uh, exculpatory evidence, things of that nature. Um, also, uh, United States versus Bates, um, that's B-A-T-E-S, uh, 917-F-2-D-388. Um, and that speaks of uh, potential for an impartial verdict Specifically, it says it, uh, along the lines of an uh, impartial verdict, if an impartial verdict can be reached or if a verdict of conviction could be reached but would have to be reversed on appeal due to an obvious procedural error in the trial. Uh, that's one of the main issues that that, that speaks to. Um, I also looked at... Uh, Arizona versus Washington, uh, 434 US 497. And that speaks to what I was stating before. Um, it says uh, neither party in a case has a right to have his case decided by a jury, which may be tainted by bias. And I, and I say that because it certainly wasn't uh, any anything dealing with the prosecution. They had nothing to do with this the defense had nothing to do with this and certainly you your honor had nothing to do with this but just for the concern factor uh the language 
uh, it's pretty clear that, that this, if not directly came from a juror who sits on this panel, it came from someone who sits in this courtroom every single day. The language it, it directed towards you, Your Honor, directed towards uh, having clear bias towards the defense. Some of the things that they quoted of having knowledge of is, is extremely concerning. Extremely concerning. And then going back to some of these uh, case laws that I cited, it talks about um, something to the effect of, uh, you know, the, the ends of public justice. Um, but I think that is leaning more so towards the judge's discretion, I would say, at least from how I was interpreting, interpreting it. Um, obviously, I'm not educated in a lot of the laws in itself, but how I was interpreting it, um, <clears throat> this is definitely, definitely a concerning issue. It's definitely something that I would request your honor to take a, 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 a long look at, um, look at some options, look at some alternatives. And those those case laws I cited talks specifically about that um, options that uh, you, Your Honor, can can look at and, and and use your discretion to see if it's appropriate in any in any way. But um, I'm extremely concerned about this. Um, if, if if anything for cautionary reasons um, I believe your honor that you definitely should um, take a look at everything I'm, I'm, I'm saying here in uh, these case laws and and um, what's the request though that you're making based upon the case law that you cite I heard in there mistrial but I want to make sure I understand the your request for relief and what it is. You say request for relief. Relief. And what are you um, asking me to do based upon the information that we, the limited information we have about the Reddit post and this trial? Um, I guess my request would be because of the concern of this to look at uh, a mistrial or at the very least a, a, a discharge of, a, of the jury at this time so this can be resolved this is this is this is alarming to say the least um, this post and, and I, I don't know what reddit is to be honest I've, I've never heard of it or used it so I, I don't know the extent of it's almost like this could be like a snowball type of thing it can it can start with something that that's this small and then it can snowball out of control into something totally different i don't know the extent of this website um i don't know who well i think the name of the person who sent the uh to, to who alerted the clerk of course to uh to this post i think his name is in is is, is in the, um the email but then that even asked the quick begs the question of how did this person come across this site what are what, what, what is their significance to this what is their role in this it's, it's just so many questions and and i mean clearly this this points at the court's integrity it points at your integrity, Your Honor. It, it's 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 alarming. It's very alarming. And if there's a chance that there could be hidden bias in this jury, it needs to be addressed now rather than later. It, 
This is very concerning. Well, thank you for bringing up your concerns. Let me turn to the state if they want to respond and then see what other issues they want to cover this morning. Judge, the original post was on a subreddit thread called Justice for Daryl. Um, that's the copy that the defendant has in front of him. That post was edited last night, uh, claiming that it was a prank from the start and that the original poster is, uh, didn't think it would get that far out of hand. The way that Reddit works, the only person who can mod, uh, excuse me, modify the content of the original post is the original poster, and because the jurors have um, no access to any electronic devices, I think it's safe to say that our 12 jurors back there are not one of the, are not the original poster. So I think that that puts that issue pretty much to bed. It's still obviously under investigation because the court takes it so seriously, but. Um, there really is no um, actionable or any real reason why um, we should doubt the jury's um, being unbiased in this case. I object to that on the grounds, Your Honor, that like you just stated, it, it's an investigation going on. And if there's an investi investigation, <coughs> then that clearly says that something is amiss. Um, we have 16, well, 15. We have 15 jurors. Uh, we, there's still too many questions that we don't know. Too many. Um, I don't think anything's put to bed because we don't know. It, it's, it's, it's unfair to say that the issue was put to bed when there's still so many questions left out there. I'm, I'm sure you reviewed it yourself, Your Honor. You you see the language in this, whatever it is, thread, I, I don't know. I don't know what this is. It's clearly a post from somebody who has intimate knowledge of, of the trial and, 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 and what's going on in the trial. I, I don't think, I mean, common sense would, would tell you that this is someone who's very close to the case whether whether they were intending to be funny whether they were intending to try to uh, prank the court or anything like that we don't know that could be anybody's guess the language in this the way that, that the way it is formatted they lay out four specific points of what, what they think they uh they point to certain language in in the case uh They make references to saying when we were in the room, they got certain feelings from when deep where they specifically refer to themselves and a group that would be we, plural. Um, they they say, and I have to admit, I am biased against the defendant for the horrible acts he did. And and they attack you, Your Honor. They they clearly attack you. This this is this is if this is I is someone's idea of fun, is is anybody's guess, but I don't believe that it is clearly by the way it's formatted and by the language that, that is in it. This is clearly someone with intimate knowledge of the case and what's going on. Clearly. It, there's no other way, there's no other way to interpret this. You can tell by just by the, the, what they're laying out in the language that they're speaking with. That this is clearly someone co close to the case. And, and because of that, it still has to be. Uh, I'm informed of the investigation, but there's still too many questions left in the air just from this. How, how can we say anything's put to bed when there's still a, a, an investigation? For all we know, what if what if this turns up that it was someone on the jury? Or what, what if it turns out 
that more people are involved in it than just whoever this anonymous uh, person was who left the post. It's too many questions and it's too concerning. What if something like this springs up again at the last minute? We've we've been going through the trial now for basically three weeks, the better part of three weeks. And even, even in uh, court dates leading up to the trial, we've never had anything like this happen. Nothing like this has been brought to your attention. Nothing like this has been been brought before the court's attention. It's, this just came out of the blue and now all of a sudden it's, it's being labeled a prank. Is that because they were found out? I mean, it, it, beg, it begs so many questions. It's, it's, it's too uncertain, it's, it's too concerning, and it's, it's too alarming. It's too alarming to just overlook and say, oh, well, we'll just, we'll just set it to the side and let them, no, this, this, there has to be some type of alternatives and some type, something has to be done, something. And if that's a mistrial, if that's uh, 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 discharging a jury, if that's some other type of alternatives that can be looked at, I'm, I'm sure that uh, these case law speaks to other options that could come into play. They deserve to at least be looked at, if, if anything, to protect the integrity of the trial. I, I find it very hard to believe that this close um, to the trial being over, and now all of a sudden, these issues are being raised. So this is obviously not a prank, and it's obvious that this is someone with intimate knowledge. It's, it's, very, it's very clear to me. Well, let me address your concern, sir. Um, I cannot make conclusions at this point about whether this is legitimate or a prank. But what I know is as follows. I received the information about the subreddit post at approximately 9.30, 9.40 yesterday morning. I and I alone made the decision to withhold advising the parties because of where we were at in the trial because there was nothing in that post, it was an anonymous post, that would lend credibility to that it was in fact one of these jurors. But out of an abundance of caution, I referred it to law enforcement because it is very serious if the integrity of these proceedings were to be put at issue by a juror. I'd remind you though, every single day these jurors were read uh, the bulk of jury instruction 50. They all took an oath and I have no reason to doubt that they would violate that oath at this time. So I took and I made the decision to withhold telling the parties because we were in the middle of instructing the jury. I was in the middle of instructing the jury. And I wasn't going to delay the proceedings because it was so speculative at that point and remains speculative at this point. Um, as you know, the case went to the jury. I brought this up. I waited about a half an hour once the case went to the jury. Uh, frankly, we had had a long day. I wanted to get a bit to eat, and then I wanted to come back out and make a record of what I had. Once again, the forensic unit with the Sheriff's Department has taken lead of this investigation. I'm not a part of that investigation. Law enforcement will handle it. From my perspective, um, not only did the clerk of court's office receive uh, emails regarding this, it sounds like the district attorney received emails. Um, I may have even gotten one, I don't remember the time, it was later regarding the post. Frankly, people figure out my email all the time. It was not solicited by me in any way and I did not respond to it and I simply forwarded that email on to law enforcement. So it's pretty clear to me a lot of people have access to Reddit. I personally am not a user of Reddit, so I don't know the ins and outs of it, other than it is a social media site uh, where people can create accounts uh, and post, and there can be like chat rooms, for example, or just various, as this is called, subreddits. Um, and at this point, you've requested a mistrial. Um, you've requested that I discharge the jury. I'm declining to do that at this time, sir. Again. I need to make decisions based upon the record that's before me. And right now the record is speculative. There are no 
facts to support a mistrial or discharging the jury. I trust the parties will continue in their own independent investigations, uh, that you will continue reviewing case law, make whatever requests that you deem appropriate. I certainly will take time uh, to look at the cases you have cited um, to see if there's anything uh, based upon the requests that you have made that I would need to further <coughs> review. Uh, but at this time, I do not see grounds for a mistrial. I do not see grounds to discharge the jury. Um, and um, that is how I will address it at this point. Um, I know the state, I believe, wanted to address something else. I'm not sure if that was it, but uh, you had deferred to Mr. Brooks, so go ahead. Are there, is there anything you want me to address or at least bring to the court's attention at uh, this time? Just a minor point, Your Honor. You had noted the defendant is in his orange jail uniform today. It's my understanding the jail did offer him the ability to put on his street clothes, and he declined, so I just wanted that on the record. Um, there may be occasions where this jury has to be brought into the courtroom for one reason or another and he should be in civilian clothes um, if that occurs if he chooses to it's a good point to bring up it is possible the jury would need to be brought out uh, if there is any question that I need to answer on the record um, if for some reason the technology were not to be working appropriately when uh, videos or other evidence are displayed to them. And so it is possible that the jury would need to come out. Of course, they'll come out if and when a verdict is reached. Um, so I would certainly give you the opportunity, sir, if you want to change into the street clothes that uh, I would certainly direct the Sheriff's Department to make that available for you, isn't, isn't should that, you choose. Isn't it my choice? Yes, it is. So why, I just, do I, why do I need to be in street clothes? Why does that need to be on the record? that your choice if, should be placed on the record so if or if right. not i was offered to be in street clothes if i made it the choice do you dispute that sir yes i dispute it because it's my choice well no at do this you point, dispute that you were this given point, the choice no, this morning at this point there's no reason why that should be on the record that if or if i was not offered street clothes what, what, rele what relevancy does that have to could have potential relevancy later on if Why? we were to challenge that you and claim that you were required to wear your jail uniform or jail attire you're I not required this I is a trial you have the right to wear street clothes and i will certainly provide uh, that opportunity should you wish to change at any point in time um, but what you're telling me is it's your choice to be in jail attire. I'll respect that choice, yeah. of course. Uh, so why does that need to be stated for the record? I just why? indicated why, sir. So I, I don't I don't see the relevancy of it. All right. Uh, at this point, never, um, unless there are any further issues, I am going to go back into my office. The courtroom will remain open and we'll let you know uh, when the jury communicates there, with us, either about a question or verdicts. There, there is something that needs to be addressed. Subject matter jurisdiction. The court declines it, that. I'm stepping on. Why doesn't have? Why hasn't it been proven on the record yet? And I check. In State versus Brooks, appearances are as they were before. I would make just one note that Mr. Brooks is now present in a suit, and I will also advise that at 9:43 a.m. this morning, I was advised that the jury had reached verdicts in this matter, and. Without anything further, I'll have the jury brought out. <clears throat> Your Honor, I don't consent to being called that name. I'd like to address subject matter jurisdiction for the record that has yet to be proven. Your objections are noted. I will not be addressing subject matter jurisdiction. Please bring the jury out. Would it be proven for the record, Your Honor? Just a reminder to everyone that I do expect everyone in the courtroom to demonstrate appropriate decorum and courtesy as the verdicts are read and refrain from audible responses. Any disruptions may result in removal from the courtroom. Your Honor, is that a tacit agreement not to address subject matter jurisdiction for the record? Jury's coming in. All rise, please. I respectfully object to that ruling, Your Honor, and request the legal reconsideration of your ruling for the record. Your requests are noted, sir. I will not be addressing that further. For the record, may I respectfully reject that ruling and take exception to that ruling, Your Honor.
is that attached to the agreement in a judicial determination that you don't have to answer that question as a public servant, Your Honor? For the record, may I request the legal or factual basis for your ruling, Your Honor? For, for the record, may I respectfully request a written judicial finding of fact and conclusion of no, law on this issue, Your Honor? All your requests are noted for the record. They all are denied, sir. All rise. Jury is coming in. For the record, may I respectfully move for an interlocutory declaratory appeal on this matter, Your Honor? Denied. For the record, may I move to stay these proceedings until this instant matter is adjudicated by a court of competent jurisdiction? Denied. Based on what law or fact, Your Honor? Is that a tacit agreement that you don't have to answer that question? For the record, Your Honor, as a public servant? <coughs> you don't have to address admiralty law or common law if this court is operating under admiralty law? We'll not be addressing any of those issues. Uh, Thank you, everyone. Object, Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you picked one among you to be the four person? Yes. Yeah. All right, and I see it's your number 11. Have you reached verdicts on all 76 counts? Yes. All right, would you please hand all of the forms to the bailiff? Your Honor, seeing is that we've reached a verdict, is it necessary that I have these shock devices on my ankles?
that I have confirmed that there are 76 signed verdicts and 76 unsigned verdicts, which would be what I would expect. All right, I will read each one into the record. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count one of the information. Dated this 26th day of October, 2022, signed by the four person, juror number 11. If you find the defendant guilty of first degree intentional homicide, answer the following question, yes or no. Did the defendant commit first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count two of the information. Did the defendant commit first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We're in hell, you piece of shit. Hey, you are to be removed right now. You will not do that. Please hold it. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count three of the information. And I should state as to count two, it was signed and dated by the four person, same as to count three. Did the defendant commit first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty a first degree intentional homicide as charged in count four of the information. Dated this 26th day of October, 2022, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count five of the information. Dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count six of the information, dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count seven of the information dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree <coughs> recklessly endangering safety as charged in count eight of the information dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count nine of the information, dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer. Yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 10 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree <coughs> recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 11 of the information, dated today's date, signed by the four person. <coughs> Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 12 of the information, dated today's date, signed by the four person, did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 13 of the information, dated today's date, signed by the four person. 
Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 14 of the information dated today's date signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 15 of the information dated today's date signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 16 of the information dated today's date signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 17 of the information dated today's date signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 18 of the information dated today's date signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 19 of the information dated today's date signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 20 of the information dated today's date signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 21 of the information dated today's date signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 22 of the information, dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 23 of the information dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 24 of the information, dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 25 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 26 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree <coughs> recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 27 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. 
Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 28 of the information dated today's date, signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 29 of the information dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 30 of the information dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. <coughs> we, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 31 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 32 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 33 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty <coughs> of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 34 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 35 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 36 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 37 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 38 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 39 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 40 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty 
of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 41 of the information dated today's date signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. <coughs> we the jury find the defendant, Darrell E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 42 of the information dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Darrell E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 43 of the information. Dated today's date, signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 44 of the information, dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 45 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 46 of the information dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 47 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 48 of the information, dated today's date, signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 49 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 50 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 51 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? <coughs> Answer, <coughs> yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 52 of the information dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We the jury find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 53 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the four person. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. 
We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 54 of the information dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 55 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 56 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 57 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 58 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly <coughs> endangering safety as charged in count 59 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 60 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 61 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 62 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 63 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. <coughs> Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 64 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 65 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 
66 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety <coughs> while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of first degree recklessly endangering safety as charged in count 67 of the information dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the defendant commit first degree recklessly endangering safety while using a dangerous weapon? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of hit and run as charged in count 68 of the information. Did the accident involve death to Virginia Sorensen? Answer, yes. Dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. We, the jury, find the defendant, Darrell E. Brooks, guilty of hit and run as charged in count 69 of the information. Dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the accident involve death to Leanna Owen? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of hit and run as charged in count 70 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the accident involve death to Tamara Durand? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of hit and run as charged in count 71 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the accident involve death to Jane Kulik? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of hit and run as charged in count 72 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the accident involve death to Wilhelm Hospital? Answer, Yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of hit and run as charged in count 73 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. Did the accident involve death to Jackson Sparks? Answer, yes. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of bail jumping as charged in count 74 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of bail jumping as charged in count 75 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the foreperson. We, the jury, find the defendant, Daryl E. Brooks, guilty of battery as charged in count 76 of the information, dated today's date and signed by the four person. Mr. Brooks, would you like me to poll the jury? Yes. Members of the jury, I'm going to ask each one of you individually to stand up, identify your number for the record, and then state whether the verdicts read in open court are your true verdicts. <coughs> I'll start with the four person. And I'll read your numbers first so it's a little bit easier. So juror number 11. <coughs> Were the verdicts read in open court, or are the verdicts, let me rephrase that. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdict, verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number three. <coughs> the verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number six. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? It is. Thank you. Juror number 14. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number 19. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number 27. 
The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number 34. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number 41. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number 45. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number 46. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. Juror number 48. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? They are, Your Honor. Thank you. Juror number 51. The verdicts read in open court, are those your true verdicts? Yes. Thank you. I should state for the record, I did have the alternates brought back in. Obviously, they did not deliberate, but it was important to have them because there are certain instructions I give at the end. All right, Mr. Brooks, are you satisfied with the polling of the jurors? No. I'm sorry? No. The court is so satisfied with the polling of the jurors. The court now accepts the verdicts. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of myself, the citizens of Waukesha County, and both parties here, I want to thank you for the time and attention that you have spent on this case. Your service in this case is now concluded. There is no requirement that you maintain secrecy concerning what happened in the jury room, but you do not have to discuss the case with anyone or answer any questions about it. On behalf, again, of the court and all of the parties, we thank you for your service over the last three and a half weeks. You are discharged and free to go. All rise for the jury, please. <coughs> Thank you. Be seated. Anything from the state at this time? Your Honor, the state moves for judgment on the verdict as to each and every count. Anything from you, Mr. Brooks? Uh, what is judgment? Given the verdicts from the jury here today, uh, the court will enter judgments of conviction based upon the verdicts on all 76 counts. The court will also revoke bond. In this case, I plan on bringing the case in Monday, this coming Monday, the 31st at 1 p.m. to address further scheduling. What I would ask the parties to do between now and then is to um, determine how long you think each side will need to present their sentencing remarks. Uh, whether you anticipate anyone speaking on your behalf, if so, how many, how long, so that I can then look at my calendar and adjust and make sure that I have the appropriate amount of time to do that. I'm not going to sentencing on Monday. It is just for further scheduling at 1 p.m. before my afternoon case. <coughs> Judge, would you be willing to consider uh, persons appearing by Zoom for sentencing? Yes, I would not do anything different than what I've been doing uh, since we started utilizing Zoom, and that is to make it available for both uh, victims and family members of the uh, defendant if they so choose to make statements over Zoom. Okay, thank you. That You're welcome. helps us in our planning. All right. All right, then. Thank you, everyone. We are adjourned for today. We'll see you all on Monday.